In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. A reminder that this Mass has been celebrated for the eternal rest of Mars of Esteban Gonzalez Mejias. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with the, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, if only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commands and statutes that are written in this book of the law. When you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious or remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that you would say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it, that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, take care of him. 
If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. I ran out of jokes. So. The, I guess the first thing I have to say is that I'm going to, I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about certain things that are like part of our daily life as a parish and as, as, as a church, you know. So don't feel like I'm pointing fingers at anyone, all right? I'm not doing that. It's just examples so we can kind of like think of in concrete ways what I'm trying to explain. All right? So I, I, I do think that I have a good relationship with the Lord. I mean, this, it's not always been like that, but now I think that you know, I, I've, I've tried, and I, and I try hard, and, and the Lord is good to me, although sometimes I don't deserve it. And um, at the beginning of my preaching ministry, I preached about things that I didn't understand why I was saying them when I was got ordained to the diaconate two years ago. But then, after being able to learn and observe and learn from our strengths, and also to, uh, to be able to identif identify the areas of our Christian lives that need improvement as a church, I decided that it's worth to repeat myself. So bear with me, because these are things about which we have talked again and again and again, and we hear them all over the place. <clears throat> so let's talk about something that we usually talk about. Let's talk about love. Right? I have some definitions from Google, because Google knows everything, right? And I did my homework, so I have some definitions. So that's just an idea of what the world thinks about love. Love. An intense feeling of deep affection. Another one is a great interest in pleasure or, or pleasure in something, in doing something. Or a feel deep affection for someone. And this is my favorite, to like and enjoy something very much. So I love muffins, for instance, right? Well, cultures have different understandings of the concept of love, right? If we think of the ancient Greeks, uh, for example, they have four types of love and that are very easy, easy to identify in the Gospels. I'm not going to go into that. No. But the question for us is simpler than that. It's in, what's love for us? What's love for Christianity? So love for us Christians, love is the same as charity, which is the theological virtue by which we love God above all things for his own sake and our neighbor as ourselves for the love of God, right? That's profound. So charity, it seems like for us, it shouldn't be just a feeble feeling, butterflies in your stomach, right? No. And the great example of what true charity is, is the fact that Christ died out of love for us while we were still his enemies, as the letter to Romans say, says. So Christ died for us when we had declared that we were his enemies. St. Paul says about charity, charity is patient and kind. Charity is not jealous or boastful. It's not arrogant or rude. Charity does not insist on its own way. 
It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Charity bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And the fruits of charity, of course, are joy, peace, and mercy. So, beautiful stuff. But besides all this, today we hear something about love that maybe sometimes we don't, we don't think about. It's, it's, love is action, not mere words. You can tell people that you love them and then act as you hated them, right? Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? See, the scholar here is asking for the necessary action to inherit eternal life. He's not asking, teacher, what do I have to feel? Jesus asked for what the law says. That's his response. And the scholar answers. Love God, and I'm paraphrasing, of course. Love God with everything you are and everything you have. Right? And Jesus accepts his answer. Were you paying attention to that? Jesus accepts his answer. Jesus accepts that love is action, not just a weak feeling. That's the root of forgiveness. But there are requirements for love. Practical way of thinking of this. A necessary mindset that we must have in order to be able to love is that we need to see others as our neighbors. So the question is, what's, what's a neighbor? Well, it's one of your own, Regard, regardless of immigration status, language, social status, you name it. All of our, all of our relationships with our family too, co-workers, friends, have to be based on the fact that they are first your neighbors, our neighbors. They are, they are one of our own. So let me give you a, a quick example of how we lose track of this, all right? As I said, don't take it personal. You're always welcome to talk to me. Please don't send letters to the bishop. Okay? It's too soon for that. It's been only a year. Let me hit two years, all right? Parish life is very difficult as a priest sometimes because we are many things to many people. We have different hats, right? So we're someone's bosses, someone's leaders, and we have authority, but at the same time, we're brothers along the way to all of you. We are your neighbors and brothers in Christ. You know that, right? As St. Augustine said, St. Augustine was a bishop from the fourth century. He said, what I am for you terrifies me. What I am with you consoles me. For you, I am a bishop. But with you, I am a Christian. Beautiful, right? So yes, we priests, we're not, we're not just, we're not running a company here. You know? We're not customer service. We, you just can't just unload them. I say this because I go to priests too, and I feel like doing it, but. You know, you just can't, cannot unload your frustrations without consequences in an unfairly way, of course. We get hurt too, because we love you and we rejoice when we see you succeed, succeed and suffer with you when you're suffering. We are your neighbors, right? I live right there in that house. Needs painting, by the way. I live in the house next to St. Mary's. I'm your neighbor, right? I, I, I listen to, to hip hop music every night, just as you do, right? <laughs> so if you're on that side of the street. Same thing on our part. You are not customers to us. So who, whoever, like if a priest treats you as if you were a customer, he's wrong. And a parish is not a company. For you are not buying anything with your offering. And I have to say this to myself too, because I give money to the church too. I mean, it's not like I'm buying anything. 
We are sharing with the church, the body of Christ, the community of believers, what God himself has allowed us to have. I live here next to you, and although I'm not even American, I am one of you in Christ. So that logic, that the customer is always right, doesn't apply here. We have to learn how to be merciful. We priests have to be merciful and assertive and courageous to tell, to tell you when you're going astray. Because this is the thing, brothers and sisters. Because we trust in God's providence and we know what he's doing. He knows what he's doing, I'm sorry. We can afford to lose your money. We can. But we cannot afford to lose your soul. That's our job. And by all this, I'm not saying, of course, don't get me wrong, the whole ser customer service is just an image. Please, they're also your neighbors. Don't, 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 don't unload your frustrations on customer service now. Don't call AT&T now. It's like, all right, I have to do some, something about this, right? No, I'm, I'm saying, I mean, this is just an image. So another example is seminarians. He's not here now. We have seminarians coming sometimes. Um, there are brothers in training to serve us as priests, and we know that in training can be tough, and the office of vocation is supposed to be a house of discernment for our brothers um, who, want, who want to serve and love God with all they are and all they have. We want to follow the steps of the good Samaritan, that is Jesus himself, right? And the, the, the vocation's office is not a recruiting office. No, it's not like we're recruiting people. I have to say that in that diocese of Worcester, we do a good job with this. So if someone is interested in priesthood, send them our way, right? But then it's just the way we see people. It's, it's just the way we see people around us. And same thing with people that are sitting next to you in the pews. Your brothers and sisters who are worshiping God with you. you know? That's why we love to see new people, right? We're very excited about the fact that we love Jesus and we, we like everyone who wants to love him come to us, right? Because we have to talk about this because uh, the, the reasons why people leave the church are many. But I assure you that it also has to do with the fact that people don't feel loved because they don't see a charity sign from us. And we, the priest, only two in a big parish, are not the only ones supposed to be visiting the sick and the homebound or asking people how you're doing or listening to other people's problems. That's part of our job, of course, and we enjoy it and we do it to the best of our capacities and abilities. But it's part of your vocation as well. So the question, let's go back to the question, all right? Who is my neighbor? The scholar asked. Whoever gets out of their way to love you which acts not just words, with, with, with acts not just words. The ones who treat us with mercy, that is the ones who get out of his or her comfort zone to help you heal. The one who sees you as their own. Now, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus today, I tell you, go and do likewise. And if you want to be someone's neighbor, you need, to, you need to understand first that everyone, every human being on earth is one of your own. Every human being on earth is one of our own. And this church, its doors are always open to whoever wants to talk to us and whoever is searching for their maker. May God help us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, let us open our hearts to God and present to him our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, she may weather difficult times with holiness and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, that through the mercy of God, all may come to know the gospel message and the ways of righteousness and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hunger, may the Lord fill their every physical and spiritual need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear prayer. For we who worship and share community here, may the Holy Spirit continue to enkindle in us the fire of his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear prayer. For all our beloved deceased, especially Patricia Sabatinelli, Sister Alice Kenny, Louis Mali and David Bremian. May they be welcome to the glory of Christ in his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And for the intentions of our parish prayer circles and those intentions we may now hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we thank you for this day, and we ask that you may continue to hear our prayers that we humbly present to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the blessing of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, <clears throat> her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Paul II, and with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brother, brother, brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they're passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Give those trespass against us. <clears throat> but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, Apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that they should enter into my From the Savior, the Lord, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. I do have some announcements. You don't have to sit down for this, right? It's just two announcements. First one, Father Kenneth's column has described an opportunity to answer the US, the U.S. Bishop's call for Eucharistic renewal by praying eventide. It's also um, called Solemn Vespers. Right? Next Sunday, July 17th at 5.30 p.m. at St. Mary Church. Basically, eventide is adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in the context of evening prayer from the Liturgy of the Hours. And I also have great news for you. We have already, we already know who are the next, our next three parishioners that are gonna serve in the parish council. Do you wanna know their names? Yeah, it took us like th three weeks, right? Thank you for, for everything you do. Um, so just to keep in mind that we have to keep them in prayer because this are wonderful people, and two of them are here. Three of them are here, I think, right? So the first one is Marilyn Barthion. Where is she? Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn, for saying yes to this task, for, to this challenge. And I, we appreciate everything you do, right? Um, Rita Camacho. Rita is, is just a wonderful parishioner of ours that's always looking, how to, looking for new ways to serve, right? So thank you. Thank you for saying yes to this challenge. And uh, last but not least, Severina Rios. Thank you, Severina, as many of you know. She's always involved in serving not only the parish, but the community in Southbridge, right? So thank you for saying yes to this. Um, well, that being said, the Lord be with you. Bow for your blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week, everyone.